Okay, this integral is for the Calculus 2 students, and this is a pretty popular integral that you need to know how to solve in your Calculus 2 class. The integral of sine square x times cosine square x. First of all, you may be thinking, let's just convert the sine square x, or maybe the other one, but let's look at the sine square x. Let's change that to 1 minus cosine square x. Can we do that? Yes, everything will be in terms of cosine, and you see, Cosine square times 1 is cosine square, and this times that is cosine to the fourth power x. And you can just integrate both of them, right? And if you want to go through that way, sure, you can. And you can actually check out my videos. I have you know, those videos for you guys already. The integral of cosine square x by itself, and then the integral of cosine to the fourth power x by itself. In the end, you just have to subtract the result. But let me tell you, that's not the way that you want to go because it will take too long, okay? All right, so I'm not going to do it that way. And similarly, you shouldn't change the cosine square x to 1 minus uh, sine square x. Right? So don't do that because for similar reason. And lastly, I want to tell you guys that we cannot use u substitution right here, neither. Because for example, if you want to let u equal to sine x, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. But here you have cosine to the second power x, right? So you will see that it's unfortunately they cannot cancel each other out nicely. Right? And you can try the other techniques such as integration by parts or whatsoever. And I'm going to leave those things to you. Because let me show you guys the following way. Right? First of all, I noticed that both of them are to the second power. So let's rewrite this integral as the integral of, let's put down sine x and then times cosine x, and then let's take both of them to the second power right here. And of course, we have to have the dx. And the reason I want to do this is because when we have sine x times cosine x, I think this is something that we can recognize, isn't it? Which one is it? All right. It's the double angle identity. And you see, this part is exactly right here. And I just have to divide both sides by 2. And now I can just actually replace this right here with that. So I can say bye-bye to the cosine. So that's nice, huh? So to continue, this is the integral of, let's put this inside as 1 half times sine of 2x, like this. And then don't forget, we still have to square that. And of course, don't lose your dx, neither. OK, now let's do some nice computation. For example, 1 half raised to the second power is 1 over 4. And that's a constant multiple, so let's just bring that to the front. So we have the 1 over 4 right here. And then we have to integrate. And now the function part is sine. And we have the square right here, right? And the 2x stays inside like that. And of course, we have the dx. So now the question becomes, how can we integrate sine square? And notice that the input is just 2x. It's a constant multiple with x, right? So you can do some u sub if you would like. Let u equal to 2x and then get du in terms of dx. But I will let you guys continue, OK? Because we don't have to do that right here. And hopefully you guys have seen my video on how to integrate sine square with just x inside. Because the step now is similar. What we'll be doing is that we'll be using the power reduction formula for sine square, OK? So what do I mean by that? Let me put it down for you guys on the side. When we have sine square, and if the angle inside, let me just write it down as theta, because now the in angle inside is 2x, so it's different. So let me just put down theta for it. When we have this, this we can change that to 1 half times 1 minus cosine of. The angle inside is 2 times that angle, which is the angle theta. Okay. And if you want to see how to prove these formulas, you guys can check out the videos. I will have links to those videos in the description for you guys, OK? So be sure you guys check them out. And now, we are going to use this formula right here to help us out with this part. So we still have the 1 over 4 in the front. And now let's integrate. As you can see, the theta here is 2x. So I will just have to plug in 2x into the theta, right? So what we will have is that we have that 1 half in the front right here. So let's put that down. Times 1 minus cosine. And then we have 2, right? Because this is from the formula. 
theta is the original input for the sine square. And once again, here we have the 2x for the angle right here. So the theta, we will have to multiply by 2x here. All right? And in the end, of course, don't forget to put down the dx. OK, so we are pretty much ready to integrate. First of all, the 1 half is just a constant multiple. And we can bring that to the front. And 1 over 4 times 1 over 2 is just 1 over 8. And then we can integrate. This one, it's not constant multiple. You have to keep it inside. You have to integrate the 1 and this part. OK? So let me write down the 1 and then minus cosine and then the 2 times 2x, which is, of course, 4x. So that's the new input here. And let's put a parenthesis, and then we have the dx. And now it's time for us to actually integrate. Let me bring down the 1 over 8 to the front. And let me open the parentheses for the result of integration. To integrate 1 in the x world, we get x. okay? And then to integrate cosine, we get positive sine. So let's write that down. We will have positive sign. And the input stays the same because the input is just 4x. And remember, when you integrate, you have to check the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 4x is 4. But when you're integrating, you have to divide it by 4, right, in this case. So I will just put this down as multiplying by 1 over 4, OK? And lastly, once again, the integral of cosine is past the sine. But originally, this was subtracting. I will have to bring down the subtraction, OK? So this is a minus. So this is pretty much it. And let me close that, because in the end, I would like to distribute the 1 over 8, and then I'll put on plus C at the very end. So finally, we will have 1 over 8 times x, and then this times that is 1 over 32, and then we maintain the sine of 4x. And we are done. We can put down a uh, plus C, and we can be really happy because this is the correct answer. All right, so this right here is it.